this is Chow again, and this is going to be a review of the central visual pathways. Okay, so right here we have a schematic um, of two eyes, your left and your right, and then back here is your occipital lobe, so we just pretend that this whole sort of area is a cross-section of your brain and you're looking down onto it. Okay, if you remember, the lateral geniculate nucleus is an area in the thalamus that processes visual information before it sends it back to the occipital lobe, um, which is the central processing area for any visual information that you have. You may also remember that uh, visual input from the left side of your visual field is going to come back and actually um, be processed by initially the photoreceptors of your retina on the right side of your eyes. So if you're just looking at the left eye alone, uh, visual information from the left side of the field is coming back, hitting the retina here. Information is relayed down the optic nerve to the chiasm, where it sends further information back towards the LGN right here. And then finally, it goes along the optic radiations to the occip occipital lobe for further processing. In the same way, over here in the right eye, um, visual input from the left side of the field hits the retina and then also shoots back along the optic nerve um, and joins fibers from the other side to take the same retrochiasmal pathway back to the LGN and then joins them again along the optic radiations to the occipital lobe. So in that way, um, all of your visual input that is coming from the left side of your field is actually processed on the right side of your brain. Similarly, visual stimulus from the right side of your field will follow a similar uh, but opposite pathway back to the left occipital lobe. Alright, so you may remember then that there are um, visual deficits or scotomas that you can expect um, depending on where along this pathway um, you have abnormalities or pathology. So if you remember um, if you have some sort of transection here, or some kind of issue right across the optic nerve, then the person would have a visual deficit completely in their right eye. Um, they would see totally normally on their left, and a lot of these people actually do just fine, um, just because it, their brain can um, continue just to ignore the right eye, and they just learn to l use their left eye for vision. Um, if you have a deficit here, right at the chiasm, uh, which uh, the prime example is with a pituitary mass or a tumor, then you would get what you call bitemporal hemianopsia. So some sort of mass is pushing up from the pituitary, it's hitting the fibers in the chiasm, and that affects your lateral visual fields first. And this is sort of the pattern of vision loss that you might see. The third situation is if you have something um, that's going on with the retrochiasmal pathway right here, or even in the LGN itself, then you would basically be missing information from the left side of your field. So you'd have a homonymous, I can actually never say that word, hemianopsia. Um, so since this is on the right side, and the right side is what processes information from the left side of your field, you'll have a deficit on the left side of your field. All right, um, the fourth part of the pathway that might be affected is where the optic radiations are. Now, if you remember, the optic radiations sort of travel in sort of a wide arcing pathway between the thalamus and the occipital lobe um, through the parietal lobe, and some of them sort of go north a little bit superiorly, and some of them travel um, inferiorly. And they uh, carry information from the upper and lower parts of your visual field. So. Um, again, since it's optic radiations on the right that are affected, that means that the left side of your field will be affected, and then whether the upper or lower portion of your field is affected sort of depends on whether or not um, the superior or inferior optic radiations have been compromised. And finally, if there's something wrong with your uh, occipital lobe itself, then you'll get sort of another one of these hemianopsias. However, you'll have what's called central sparing. Um, 
there is something unique to the central visual pathways that allows sort of a sparing of this central vision. Somehow, sometimes when only one lobe is affected, the other lobe can sort of pick up for the other one. And so you'll sort of get this pattern of vision loss where you have kind of um, vision loss on one half with like this little um, central area where vision is spared. Um, hopefully that was a pretty good review. I know I had to go over this many, many, many times before I had it down. Um, but the idea is that if you have a patient that comes in complaining of vision loss in, in any, any of these sort of patterns, um, you might be able to use these to try to pinpoint and track where um, along the visual pathway the deficit is occurring. Thank you very much for listening, and here's a picture of a bunny attacking a cat.